Welcome back to the second lecture of this course. Uh, we had a short introduction in the first uh, lecture and uh, we will continue with the introduction. So, one of the important things that I highlighted towards the end of the first talk is the existence of Van der Waals force. We also discussed and these are things we will discuss in greater detail that uh, between two molecules the attractive component of Van der Waals force scales as 1 by r to the power 6. From here itself you can get an idea about what is uh, what is happening uh, when the dimensions of the system are very very small because the gravitational field sort of scales as m g h or m g r. So, it is r to the power 1 in contrast Van der Waals forces scale as 1 by r to the power 6 or it is r to the power uh, uh, minus 6. So, now you all can understand that if r is smaller this term starts to shoot up and it turns out that uh, at uh, few tens of nanometer length scale gravity is almost non-existent and the situation is completely dominated by Van der Waals force. There are couple more things we need to understand if you look at this particular plot in fact, it is there in the PPT also. If you look at this particular plot, this is sort of a critical dimension or critical separation distance. Why? Because beyond this or if the separation distance between the two molecules is beyond this R c, there is almost no interaction and uh, arguably this is of the order of 5 to 10 nanometer maximum. There is lot of dispute on that. There is one uh, quick search you can do or is on non retarded versus uh, retarded Van der Waals interaction and find out what it is. Uh, this is not in the course, but this is for your own learning. So, what we understand that between two fundamental particles the attraction scales as 1 by r to the power 6 and the interaction stretches between let us say 5 to 10. Uh, nanometers. The situation becomes slightly different and this is something you will learn uh, in great detail in the course. Between two surfaces and please understand that in not even in macroscopic system, but even in small systems you rarely are looking at uh, for any engineering application interaction between two molecules. You are more interested in looking at the interaction between two surfaces and therefore, how the Van der Waals force scales between two surfaces is a very important aspect and it turns out that the Van der Waals interaction between two surfaces, let us say surface 1 and surface 2 scales as the scaling does not remain r to the power 6, it changes to r square r to the power minus 2 and as a result in fact, if you superpose on the same plot the interaction sort of becomes longer range and this r c for surface again arguably is of the order of 100 nanometer. So, here is something uh, a quick take home message nano scale dominated by London dispersion forces or the induced dipole induced dipole type Van der Waals forces these are called the dispersion forces. It is dominated by this uh, intermolecular uh, induced dipole Van der Waals forces whose effect between two molecules sort of stretch by up to 10 nanometer maximum with a scaling of 1 by r to the power min 1 by r to the power 6. However, the same force is responsible for a rather longer range interaction up to 100 nanometer between two surfaces and the, the, the scaling sort of changes to 1 by r square. This is something you will learn, but uh, this is I am just giving an introduction. So, these are a good concepts to sort of remember. So, what is the consequence? 
consequence is we now know the effect of interaction between two surfaces stretches to about 100 nanometer. What is the consequence of this? And uh, do not forget the name of this course, it is soft nanotechnology. Where it becomes extremely important is in a thin film. So, what is a film? It is a, it's a layer of material. Right. So, let us say it is a film of some material and often films are coated on a on a on another layer or a substrate and that is essentially or you all know that these are coatings. Coatings are extremely important in variety of settings whole lot of functional applications right from your uh, windscreen glass windscreen to your nonstick cookware to your uh, spectacles these days everything comes with a coating. So, what happens in this film? So, if I now ask you a simple question that, uh, so the first question that one should, that should come to your mind is this word thin. So, what exactly is a thin film? How do you define a thin film? So, is it like a number like it is less than 100 micron, do not forget 70 micron is roughly your hair. So, 100 micron is pretty thin, uh, 10 micron 1 micron, 500 nanometer, what is it? Well, there are different uh, ways to define what is a thin film and for different contexts, in fact, the definition of thin film also changes. But for our context, we will consider something to be a thin film, not based on any number, but based on something else. Let us see what uh, a thin film is. In fact, a thin film has two boundaries. One is the free surface of the film and the second one is the film substrate interface. In fact, the way I have defined the two boundaries also clarifies a pretty important and interesting concepts that concept that is going to come up. And let me highlight it straight away since we are talking about it here. What is the difference between a surface and an interface? It is going to come up. Uh, you can quickly get an idea when two materials, both of them are non condensed. Uh, both of them are condensed that is non condensed is either gas or vacuum they are in contact like here a film and the substrate material both of them are condensed phases they are in contact they in fact give rise to an interface. However, when a condensed phase is in contact with another non condensed phase which can be gas or which can be vacuum then it is in fact called a surface. So, that is a very important uh, classification we often tend to sort of uh, use them interchangeably, but in science surface and interface are different uh, things which you need to understand. So, again coming back to the question of what is thin. So, see here now we identify that a thin film has two boundaries and in the previous discussion we also found out that when the separation distance between two surfaces is less than about 100 nanometer there is in fact active van der Waals interaction because beyond this 100 nanometer limit there is no interaction. So, that sort of sets the tone for defining what is a thin film in our context and that is we will consider a film to be thin if there is active and I emphasize this word. Uh, van der Waals force based interfacial interaction between the two surfaces interfaces 
why I write these surfaces or interfaces is I am coming in a minute of the film. So, that sort of sets a tone for our setting roughly 100 nanometer is sort of the limit. So, any film that is about thicker than 100 nanometer we will not consider it to be a thin film simply because of the fact that uh, based on our concept that there is no virtually no interfacial interaction. Uh, one quick uh, highlight may be why I mentioned between the two surfaces or interfaces because this type of a film which is a coated film coated or a supported thin film has one surface and one interface we already have discussed about it, but you can in principle have a free standing film. Can anyone think of an example? A very simple example is the soap bubble, the outer periphery of a soap bubble. So, you can have a free standing film where you have surfaces on both sides or you can have a film sandwiched between let us say two solids. it can be a liquid, it can be another solid. So, in fact, this film has two interfaces and where does one see this type of a film? In fact, uh, lubricating oil in a gear or something like that, uh, in fact, uh, forms uh, films like this. So, here is the lubricating layer, sorry the picture is not that great, maybe I can try to draw it later. So, here is one gear, the groove of a gear and here is another one and, and as you know sorry it will go like this and, and as you know you have this lubricating film here. So, this, uh, this is a type of a film which is also called the lubricating film will only have two interfaces. So, this uh, is important, but then uh, why at all we worry about it? Now, we worry about it because of something that is embedded in the title of the course and that is the so called soft. So, now you look into this film or maybe I will just uh, draw it afresh. So, you have a film which is thinner than let us say 100 nanometer. So, if it is thinner than 100 nanometer, you now know that there is active interaction, Van der Waals interaction between these two interfaces. Fair enough, how does it matter? If this film is very thin and it is made of a rigid material, in fact, nothing will happen. If the material is rigid, no effect. However, now, consider that you have a film let us say of a liquid or some soft material which is soft enough to deform to the magnitude of these V d w or Van der Waals forces then what will happen is the depending on the nature of this interaction, I have not yet told, I have told that between two molecules uh, the nature of Van der Waals force is attractive, but we will see uh, in the course of this lecture that a coated film for a coated film or a supported film, even the effect of Van der Waals force can be attractive or repulsive based on uh, the nature of the weightability and surface energy and stuff like that. Those are things you will learn in great detail as a part of this particular course. So, uh, what might happen is uh, you might have a film which is thin enough as I mentioned that this is thin. So, this is about less than 100 nanometer. and there is an active interfacial interaction. So, if the interaction is repulsive between these two interfaces, in fact, there is absolutely no problem, the film will remain 
stable. I am I'm sorry, in fact, this is a wrong thing I have written. Uh, so, this will be the coating, this will be a stable film. So, this will act as a coating, but if the film, if the interaction is attractive, then the film might disintegrate and it might revolve into some sort of structures, nanostructures. Uh, so, this is uh, what is the so called spontaneous instability in a thin film. It is, uh, you can see, uh, it is very difficult to say whether it is good or bad or whatever, uh, largely it uh, sort of depends on the application you are looking at, because we have already talked that there are settings where uh, nanostructures, that is something that I am going to come up right next, where nanostructured surfaces are important. So, you see that this type of a film can be used as a, this type of instability or spontaneous instability that has its genesis in van der Waals forces can be used for uh, nanostructuring, but there are certain limitations and we need to, we will see how this can be cleverly done. On the other hand, uh, films that are stable act as excellent coatings. I will give you a very, very simple example. So, when uh, the painter is painting any surface, you invariably tell him to put two coats, right. And we all feel that we are doing this in order to sort of, if, if two coats are put up, then the painting or the color will look bright. Well, that is partially correct. In fact, there is a long implicit history behind making two coats is simply by adding two layers, you are increasing the thickness of the paint, which is also a type of a coating. Uh, much higher than 100 nanometer. So, what are you ensuring by doing this? What you are ensuring is that the films are thick enough and then there is no van der Waals interaction and therefore, irrespective of whatever is the interaction between the two surfaces, it does not lead to uh, this type of a rupture. That is exactly what you do. Uh, so, th these are the important aspects of van der Waals forces. And, uh, nano scale or the meso scale, uh, another terminology that I will be uh, using quite frequently the meso scale. Uh, it is roughly about hundreds of nanometer and you all know that now uh, nano, the effect of so called effect of nano is not exactly limited. You already have realized because this uh, interaction van der Waals interaction, which is one of the major things, uh, major differences as compared to the macroscopic world. Uh, sort of stretches up to 100 nanometer. So, few few hundreds of nanometer that is where particularly in the in the effect of structuring you will see that there are effects is a length scale that we will talk about the meso scale. This is again depending on uh, areas of science people have a tendency of using this word. For example, zeolite people talk about few nanometer as meso scale, but in our context uh, we will be using a uh, few hundreds of nanometer as the uh, meso scale. So, moving on we will now talk about the so called patterns at the nano and meso scale. So, nanometer you all know um, 10 to the power minus 9 meter, I just pointed out meso scale is a uh, few hundreds of nanometer and this is human hair. So, it is 50 to 70 micron depending on how good the quality of your hair is, how much oil you apply or not, it will be somewhere between 50 to 70 micron. And therefore, we are now talking about definitely things which are some micron and hundreds of nanometer often down to few tens of nanometer. So, you, you should understand that should give you a qualitative idea about how small things we are talking about. Uh, what is important about this so called nano scale patterns that we, we can talk, we will be talking about certain exotic properties, certain properties and often they are exotic properties, which are attributed to the presence of nanostructures on the surface. So, let us say whether uh, steel is hard or uh, plastic or polymer is soft is attributed to the bulk property of the material, right. It, it depends on steel is a crystalline material, this is an amorphous material. So, since the molecules are arranged in a crystalline order, you need much more force to dislodge one molecule or remove it from the lattice and therefore, it is very hard. In comparison, uh, uh, let us say an amorphous material is much uh, less hard and you can sort of easily break it or things like that. So, these are differences in properties which are attributed to the bulk structure of the material. But in the next few slides, I will give you examples of situations where you have 
extraordinary properties and the properties arise out of surface structures and often the length scale of these structures are uh, micron down lower than a micron or in maximum in certain cases few microns. So, these type of structures are seen in nature in biology and also there is lot of research on replicating these structures artificially which falls into one of the major topics that we are going to cover as I have uh, told in the very first slide is nano patterns. So, let us see what type of uh, things are we talking about. So, the other important thing to uh, really ask is what type of nano structures are we talking about because these structures can be on the surface. So, this is uh, an atomic force microscope image of a nano pattern surface or these structures can be internal structures as well and this type of structures we will touch upon a little bit of it with polymer blends and maybe if time permits with block copolymers and things like that. But this type of structures also give rise to extraordinary properties in certain cases some examples I will pick up, but most uh, as a part of this course we will uh, devote a lot of time on how to make these uh, type of uh, nano structures. So, nano structures have uh, application in whole lot of areas something I will just highlight optics, electronics, uh, structural superhydrophobicity, biotechnology and uh, stuff like that and uh, maybe um, initial part of the course we will focus uh, largely on how to make these type of surface structures or nano patterns. So, application of pattern surfaces some examples I will quickly glance through and one of the things that you all know is this a drop of water almost rolls down the surface of a lotus leaf like a drop of uh, like a marble and this is attributed to presence of uh, surface structures. In fact, you will soon realize when we talk about Young's equation it is actually a combination of surface structures as well as low surface energy coating that uh, makes this possible. Uh, so, these type of uh, surfaces are artificially made even in the animal kingdom there are lots of example of this type of hydrophobic surfaces again many of you probably know the term hydrophilic and uh, hydrophobic but this is something uh, we will talk in greater detail and we will understand maybe in the next lecture itself. Uh, so, even in the animal world you see extraordinary uh, features like this uh, fishing spider can stay under water for roughly half an hour or this water strider can walk on, on a water surface. So, they are at actually attributed to the presence of some uh, hairy structures in their legs where in this particular case they entrap oxygen which sort of sustains the breathing for about uh, half an hour or so and in this particular case actually these, uh, these uh, legs are extraordinarily hydrophobic. So, uh, there is there are actually air pockets that leads to some artificial buoyancy effect and uh, they can uh, walk. There are many similar examples like bird feathers, birds get wet, but they also dry up very free very quickly. They do not have uh, I mean if they get wet in rain they do not have the mechanism to use a hair dryer or a towel. Uh, most plant leaves lotus leaf it is mandatory it is it is essential for their survival because the lotus leaf grows on the surface of a pond and now if there is a heavy rainfall what will happen if water clogs on the leaf it does not drain off then the weight of the water is enough to sort of submerge the leaf and the plant will die. So, in the animal kingdom as well as in the plant kingdom many of the functionalities are attributed to survival because they are not as intelligent as human beings are. So, and turns out that many of these extraordinary properties or extraordinary features these these uh, sort of uh, animals or plants have have their origin in uh, surface structures and often they go down to the nanometer scale. Self cleaning surfaces is again a great example where hydrophobicity has been extensively used and uh, it is widely used now because any of the major cities even in India now if you go you will see tall uh, skyscrapers tall buildings and many of them in fact come with glass facades and these glasses seem to be always very shining though the reality is if you leave your bike or cycle or car outside it gathers dust even in within a few days time. So, what is the secret in fact it, it turns out that most of these glasses come with a self cleaning coating. So, that a drop of water uh, easily rolls down like a lotus leaf and as in addition to that as it rolls down it sort of picks up all the dust particles 
that is sitting on that. Uh, I have shown in a cartoon that this is some sort of structure, yes they are nano pattern surfaces. So, this in fact leads to a two fold effect as we will see. One of them is it increases this tendency of rolling or the effective hydrophobicity of the water drop. The other thing is since these structures are, uh, the, see these the surfaces are structured, it sort of reduces the adhesion of the dust particles. So, you can always uh, firmly sit on a, on a flat surface, but if uh, the surface has uh, structures, uh, you, you, your feet sort of tends to, you have to, you have difficulty in balancing some sort of a similar effect. We will talk about it. The second example of uh, these nano patterns is uh, so, so called structural color. If you take a compact disc CD or a DVD, look at the back side of it, you have all seen the genesis, uh, you see the rainbow colors. Now, this color is not attributed to the classical pigment based color we talk about or we know about, but it is attributed to diffraction and interferences which many of you know or you can just uh, try to find it out in a little bit detail what it is from the Google. And uh, so, two waves interfere constructively in, in phase with one other, the other. So, um, this sort of gives uh, interference uh, uh, or they can interact in the out of phase and this leads to uh, different wavelengths. So, extinguishing of light of different wavelengths changing the color of the object. It is important that if you take a blue disc and you uh, just a blue sheet of paper and you turn it, it remains blue from all angles. But you have all seen that if you turn a CD at different angles, it exhibits different colors. So, it is due to the so called uh, structural color from nanostructures and uh, you can just look into this slide and uh, do some bit of uh, further uh, understanding. So, I think this particular talk I will stop here, we are running out of time and I will quickly give you some more examples and move on to context that is uh, some basic issues related to surfaces, interfaces and weighting. Thank you.